Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash Cairo Business Mojo. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Hello, hello, I am Dr. Richard Day, and this is the Cairo Business Mojo Podcast. Thank you once again for spending some of your very valuable time with us. Today, I am going to talk about the concept of an avatar, and I don't mean the James Cameron film with the blue aliens. I am talking about your customer avatar or your ideal patient, and this is a term that is new or new to me, at least, that I started hearing just in the last few years, and usually it pertains to internet marketing, but I think that it's so valuable. It's something that we have started to do, and what it really is is it is a profile of your ideal patient. So what I want to do today is take you through an ideal avatar. Now, an avatar isn't the same thing necessarily as a patient type. And what I mean by that is you might have PI patients, Medicare patients, they, those are very general. This is more specific. So they, they are related, but I would say that an ideal avatar is actually within that broader category. So you may have an avatar of your ideal Medicare patient, but within that is going to be a narrower focus on this particular person or this avatar. So I'll take you through that today. So the first thing you want to do when you're establishing an avatar, I, w- I name them, and I'll even <laughs> take it one step further, go online and find a picture of any person, random, I don't care, and st- and put it on, you know, paste it onto your Word document, and that is going to be this person. So our ideal avatar is Kate. She is 32 years old. She's a female. She's married, and she has two kids. She's college educated with a degree, but she stopped working when she had kids and she's been out of work for a couple of years, but that's fine because her husband makes about $75,000 to $90,000 a year. Uh, and so money is not a problem. They seem to do just fine. Um, in fact, he's in line for a promotion. What goals and values does Kate have? Well, she would love to lose some baby weight that she can't seem to lose. And she's been saying that for a couple of years, uh, but it just hasn't happened yet. She's got a six-year-old and a three-year-old, and uh, she would really like to take better care of herself and get in shape and lose some of that weight. She'd also like to have some more energy and less fatigue. She just finds that she's so busy as a mom running the household and doing all the things that moms do, taking the kids to the doctor and to preschool and the activities they're involved in, that she's just on the go and tends to be fatigued. She also has some aches and pains she started noticing, and that's what brought her in today. Her neck has just been bothering her, and sometimes headaches, and maybe it's tension, maybe it's stress, she's not sure, but she's there to see you today for this neck pain. Her values, well, family, that's the biggest thing with her. She loves spending time with her family, but spending time with her family, there's a balance of doing that and taking care of the family. So those are the big demands that she has on her life. So where does Kate hang out? Well, she's active in mommy meetups. She goes to organizations uh, like meetup.com that have get-togethers for like-minded moms where they get their kids together and set up play dates or they maybe all take a field trip out to Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. But that's that's a place she goes to quite a bit. Um, either online or physically, they'll go meet up. Um, she's also one her daughter is in ballet, so she'll take her daughter to ballet and she knows the other ballet moms there. And of course they talk and have gotten to know each other. She's active in her church and there's a summer camp that she likes to take the kids to as well. And there's a, there, the moms go away too. So it's actually the kids are in camp for the kids and the moms are all together in a different cabin. She's active in her neighborhood association. So they have summer barbecues and things like that that go on in their neighborhood, usually one in the spring and one in the fall. And she volunteers at her kid's um, school, her oldest child's school, and uh, and helps plan those events, um, fundraisers and bake sales and things of that nature. Her challenge really is how busy she is. She is on the go and doing so much that that is might be hard for her to commit to coming in regularly for care in your office. 
The other challenge she has is that she's the type of person that needs to see pretty quick results. And she, she, because she is so busy, she won't follow through on things if she doesn't see the value in them pretty soon. Some objections she might have is, well, time, obviously. Money is an objection that everyone has. Um, but if there's a value there and it's getting results, then money becomes less of a problem. And, and third, her husband really holds the financial purse strings. He's the one who makes the decisions for the family when it comes to spending money. So that's Kate. That's Kate in a nutshell. And so what you do is you put all of this information, or this is what I suggest you do, put all of this information for your fictional ideal patient or avatar on a page. Make this person real to you in your mind. This person, and as I'm painting the picture, you can probably, you know, you're thinking of people, oh, I know someone like that, or I've seen this patient before. So you sit down and you make a list of where is this person hanging out and how do I market to that person? So we talked about where she's hanging out. So mommy meetups, it might be a good idea to go visit those groups, especially if you have kids and, uh, and you can, and, and if you are a male and not a mommy, obviously find out how you can market to those groups. Ask if you can show up to a meeting that you have some information that you would like to share The ballet dancer, she's going to these uh, events for the child. Maybe it's at a dance studio or at the rec center. But go visit those locations and find out, come up with ways that you can do some marketing. It might be creating a poster and hanging it. Um, It might be, in the past, we've done things like having handouts printed out. Um, she's active in her neighborhood association. Well, oftentimes neighborhood associations want sponsorship. Sometimes they just want, you know, if you give them uh, a coupon for a free massage or something like that, that they can have in a raffle for their summer barbecue. But that is a way to get in and around people like Kate and meet her and the people she associates with. She volunteers at her child's school. So again, you can sponsor things in you, in her school activities and events uh, schools, especially these days, sadly, are really short of funds. And so any way that you can help sponsor uh, events in school uh, and take that financial burden or, or ease some of it, at least, is very helpful. And it's a it's a great way to meet this person, Kate, and be in and around the world in which she lives. The challenge is, yeah, she's busy. So you need to be very sort of concise with your treatment be respectful of her time. She's probably going to come into the office with her children because, she, you know, she's the the primary caregiver. So you need to make sure that your office can accommodate uh, children. It doesn't have a play area or some toys or, or that sort of thing in the office to entertain those kids. Time and money, her husband. So he's the one who makes the financial decisions. It might be that you ask him to come in um, or, you know, talk to her about him because you're going to get to know your patients as you go through treatment plans with them. What issues is he having if he's seeing results with his wife or his wife's happier um, then, of course, that's building value for the husband, right? He is looking at this saying, well, my wife feels better. She's l- less fatigued um, and happier, and I like that, and I know this is costing some some money, but I'm okay with it because we're seeing the results. So really, you're just building this profile of this person. Then you're going to where this person hangs out, and you're designing a campaign, an ad campaign or promotion of some sort in this area where this particular tribe or following tends to gather, Now, Kate is one example of one type, but you may have someone who's a completely different avatar, who is a CrossFitter, who is in completely different social circles, who doesn't have children. Um, You might want to design your ideal Medicare avatar. Where is this person going? What are they doing? What clubs do they belong to? Um, There's just the student athlete, the weekend warrior. There are many different types, but... What happens is, is you start mapping this out and you really start thinking, going through those questions, thinking through them. Where is this person? What are they doing? And how can I reach them? And you'll start coming up with ideas, putting together marketing campaigns based on that. I think a lot of us, you know, I'll, they'll, they'll, you'll say, well, I, I do mailers. And you send out mailers. Um, are they going to new residents? Are you targeting them specifically? That can be very helpful. This is just one more tool that can help you really target the ideal patient for you and your practice. We hope this has been helpful to you. I know it has been in our practice. So go out there and have a great day and we'll catch you next time. Psst. Hey, this is Dr. Day. I hope you are enjoying the show. If you are, please do us a favor and jump on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review. 
Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast at www.cairobusinessmojo.com. 